Hello there, and welcome to this collection of notebooks and tutorials on multi-rate signal processing. This is a course offered by Professor Schula at the Humanau University of Technology. I am Renato, and on this notebook we'll talk about filter design using the window method. Let's get started. We start with the ideal filter, the sync function, which is infinitely long. To make it causal and to obtain a desired trade-off between the transition band width and the stop band attenuation, we multiply it with a finite length window. This window is either obtained by optimization or is chosen from one of the well-known and studied windows like we've seen in the previous tutorial. Longer filters also lead to narrower transition bands. The resulting frequency response after multiplying the ideal impulse response, the sync function, with the window function is then the convolution of the ideal frequency response and the window frequency response. The, re the resulting pass band width is the ideal pass band width plus the pass band width of the window. And the resulting stop band starts at the stop band frequency of the ideal frequency response, the cutoff frequency, plus the frequency of the start of the stop band of the window function, adding the transition band. To obtain a given pass band or stop band, this has to be taken into account and the cutoff frequency has to be modified accordingly. Let's take a look at this example. We saw that the Kaiser window at least fulfills the requirement for the attenuation of our downsampling application example. How do we get the correct start of the stop band for attenuating the aliasing for downsampling sufficiently using our filter design method? Our stop band should start at 0.5 for a downsampling factor of n equals to 2. Looking at the Kaiser window with beta equals to weight, we see that we get minus 60 dB at a normalized frequency of about 0.36. Hence, our ideal filter needs to have the end of its pass band at 0.5, it's our desired, minus 0.36, at it's equal to 0.14. Remember here that 1 is the Nyquist frequency. Hence, our omega for the stop band should be 0.14 pi. Observe here we need the multiplication with pi since for our formula pi is the Nyquist frequency. Now, we just need to plug this into our formula for the ideal future, the sync function, with L equals to 16. So here we have our uh, formula and we will plug in the 0 0.14 pi here and we are using L equals to 16 so we have this 7.5 here and here or we can have a different formulation uh, with normalization to let the pass band start at 0 dB so we have this formula here and then omega C should be equal to 0 0.14 pi and then we multiply it with our Kaiser window. We can use Python to visualize this example from here. We are using NumPy and um, Matplotlib to plot. We are defining our Kaiser window here with um, 16, the length is equal to 16. Here we are defining our ideal sync function with the omega c equals to 0 0.14 pi. Here we are multiplying the Kaiser window with the ideal impulse response and here is the plot of the impulse response. Now when we take a look at the its frequency response again we are going to use the same function frec z uh, from signal side by signal and here we have the frequency response of this filter here and we see that at normalized frequency 0 0.5 it has indeed enough attenuation at about minus 80 dB but the pass band up to about minus 6 dB is only up to about the normalized frequency uh, 0 
15, which is usually not enough. We didn't really specify it, but for practical reasons, this would usually not work. So how can we improve the passband now? Since we already tried different compromises for the width of the transition band and the stop band attenuation, we can try to increase the future length. So if we try the length equals to 32 instead of 16, and we will use the Kaiser window with beta equals to 8. So here now we are defining um, the Kaiser window with beta equals to 8 and the length is equals to 32. So we have this is the Kaiser uh, impulse uh, window. The frequency response is given here for the Kaiser window with um, beta equals to 8 and the length equals to 32 and the Kaiser window would already be our final filter uh, if our ideal impulse response would consist of an infinite sequence of ones. So this is the case if our ideal filter is only a delta pulse at frequency zero, hence an infinitely small low pass filter. Observe that the main lobe of this um, line 32 window is up to about 0 0.17 is half as wide the main lobe uh, at length 16. In this way, we have the transition wind width of our resulting filter. Here we can say that our passband ends at normalized frequency 0 0.17. Hence, we need to have our ideal filter with a stop band starting at 0 0.5. This is our desired um, cutoff frequency. Then minus 0 0.17 which is the end of the passband from the Kaiser window, so it's equal to 0 0.33, resulting in the formula for the ideal impulse response as above for the length of, uh, of 16. So now we are using the length of uh, 32, then we have here is 15.5, and we need to have the omega c 0 0.33 uh, times pi, and then we multiply it with the Kaiser window. So here in Python we have our ideal impulse response and we have the 0 0.33 times pi that we calculated before from here. Here we have our Kaiser window length equals 32 and beta equals to 8. We are multiplying the ideal filter and the Kaiser window, and here is the impulse response of our filter. So the um, frequency response of this filter is given here, and we see that uh, our stop end, which starts at 0 0.5, has indeed still enough um, attenuation at about minus 80 dB, and if we take um, the 3 dB as the limit for our um, pass band, it goes up to the normalized frequency of 0 0.3. Going back to our downsampling example, where we downsample from 44.1 kHz to 22.05 kHz sampling rate, the normalized frequency 0 0.5 corresponds to 11 kHz, and the upper limit of our passband is 0 0.3 or 6.6 .6 kHz. This now looks like a usable filter for our application. This also shows why the usable frequencies in a time discrete representation is always clearly lower than the Nyquist frequency. So we need filters which have transition bands. So far we only designed low pass filters. So how do we obtain a high pass or a band pass um, filters? So the first approach is to uh, design an ideal filter. So again, we design an ideal filter and then window it. For instance, if we want to obtain a high pass, we can start to design an ideal high pass filter using our inverse DTFT, which gives, gives us a doubly um, infinite impulse response from minus infinity to plus infinity. And then we window this ideal impulse response to obtain an FIR filter. For the ideal high pass, we can define the desired frequency a response as 1 at the high frequencies above the cutoff frequency and 0 at the low frequencies given by this 
a system of equations here. If we want to have a real valued impulse response, we need to make the frequency response such that its values at negative frequencies are conjugate complex of the values at positive frequencies. The easy way to do uh, it here is to have the negative frequencies identical to the uh, positive frequencies. So we have this um, system of equations here. Now we can apply the inverse DTFT to find an analytical solution, just like with the low pass filter, to obtain the ideal impulse response and then multiply it with a window uh, to obtain an FIR filter. So in case we would like to do a pass, a band pass, uh, the approach is the same. We design an ideal band pass a filter, then we take the inverse DTFT, find an analytical solution, and then we multiply it to a window to obtain an FIR filter. Another approach is to use modulation, so shifting our ideal passband to the desired position in frequency. In this way, we can turn a low pass into a band pass or a high pass depending on where we shift our passband. In this way, we can turn a new problem into our known prob problem, the designing of a low pass filter. So the idea is that we design just the low pass filter and then we use modulation, so we shift um, to the desired position. And how do we shift our pass band in the frequency domain? We convolve it in the frequency domain with a Dirac impulse at the desired center frequency omega zero. So here we have frequency response of our um, filter and then we multiply with the Dirac um, at the desired center frequency omega and then we will have our frequency response at the desired frequency. If we want to have real valued impulse response, we need to preserve the symmetry between positive and negative frequencies by also shifting the frequency response by the same amount to the negative frequencies. So we have here, this is uh, the equations. We have this, so we are shifting the positive frequencies and we are shifting the negative frequencies and we end up with our um, filter And how does this change our ideal impulse response? To answer, we take the inverse DTFT. So the convolution in the frequency domain becomes a multiplication in the time domain. And now we just need the inverse DTFT of this part here. And to obtain it, we can simply use our formula for the inverse DTFT. And remember that the in integration of a function multiplied with a Dirac impulse is the function value at the position of the Dirac, and here is omega uh, nu, so we have that this is the uh, resulting frequency uh, response. Now we can get the inverse DTFT, which is now this, and we have this result here. So this is the function which we need to multiply with our ideal low pass filter to obtain an ideal filter where the pass band is centered at around omega nu. We call this cosine function a modulation function and the multiplication with this function is a modulation. Observe that we can also introduce a phase shift p into this modulation function, for instance, turning the cosine function into a sine function. This would still work because the frequency domain, uh, in the frequency domain, this is a multiplication with another complex exponential from the phase term in the time domain, just like uh, from my time lag. It would just introduce a phase change in the final filter. We also have a Python example for this modulation principles. So in the following example, we take the signal from a microphone and we'll modulate it with a, a 500 Hertz sine function. So we're multiplying it with a 500 Hertz function. Here we are going to use Pi Audio and IPy widgets to uh, control. So we define our parameters. So we are using 32 kilohertz as sampling rate. Uh, here is the function that's going to be run on the separate thread. Uh, then we are reading from the audio input stream into the data with the block length defined by chunk. We are converting this stream of bytes to a list of short integers. Here we are computing this um, 
block array of uh, the sign samples with 500 hertz and then we're multiplying our samples so this is where the modulation takes part then we convert from integers back to the stream of data and we write the stream here is just the GUI so we have a start and a stop button so let's um, let's run and see what happens hello 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 Dash I'm Dash this the Mickey Mouse toy this is the modulation taking place uh oh hello So we see that the sound um, and the voice sound higher in pitch, something like a mic and mouse voice, uh, voice, and this is the result of the frequency shift. So the conclusion is that we can shift our ideal filter in the frequency domain by, by multiplying the ideal or already windowed impulse response with a modulation function defined like this, for example, where P can be some phase delay. And this is illustrated in the following picture. So we have our low pass original spectrum. And then after modulation with a frequency omega null, and we have copies of the original spectrum where the center frequency now is our modulation um, omega null. Now we have another example. So to obtain a high pass, we need to shift the pass band from 0 to pi, hence we get the omega nu is equal to pi, we will choose p equals to 0, and the modulation function is going to be 1 divided by pi times cosine of pi times n, which is simply a sequence of plus or minus 1. So here we are defining our low pass, so this is the ideal low pass we are defining, then we are multiplying the ideal filter with a Kaiser window, the same principle like we did before. So we are using the window method to design a low pass. And then we are going to use the modulation to transform this low pass into a high pass. So how can we make a high pass out of this low pass using modulation? We are going to multiply our filter by the cosine of pi times n, like we are doing here. And here is the impulse response of the modulated. So this is, we will see that uh, we can see the effect of modulation with the plus or minus one sequence and the resulting frequency response, when you will see the frac Z, we have now a high pass filter. So we design the low pass using the window method. Then we just use modulation to transform the low pass to a high pass and we see that we indeed obtain a high pass so it basically looks like a mirrored around the center in reality it's shifted but what we see as the high pass part was the negative frequency part of our low pass we can also obtain a band pass if now the center frequency will be pi divided by 2 so we are multiplying our low pass filter with this modulation function, if the center frequency is pi divided by 2, and we see we have a band pass. But observe that we obtain a bad pass, that in the, this band pass case, in which is twice as wide as the case of low pass or high pass, because here the negative frequencies of the low or high pass can appear as the other half of the pass band. So when you are going to use modulation, you need to design the low pass and then you must adjust the bandwidth, so the past band of the low pass and the center frequency of the modulation function so you can achieve the desired characteristics of the band pass. Yeah, you, we see that in this case, the band, the band pass here is twice as wide maybe we don't want this so what we can do is that we can make the low pass we designed low pass and the the cutoff frequency would be half perhaps of the um, what we would design for a normal low pass and then when we modulate we'll have the desired uh, band pass filter
So that's it for this notebook and I see you next time.